Keep yourself in the loop of everything football. Listen to Alex and Jeremiah on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Hello there, I'm Jeremiah. I am Alex, always in forever here. Dedicated to college and NFL football. The latest football news on and off the feet. NFL draft trade rumors. We've got you covered from the NFL, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, and everything else in between. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts football podcast where we talk the latest news rumors and games of the nfl and college football from the latest signings to this year's breakout star and all of the news in between as always i'm alex and i'm jeremiah thank you for joining us today yeah thank you america okay <laughs> okay yeah the, before we start the show did you happen to see uh, america's got talent the other night no no you did not oh. but i watched the clip that you told me to watch <laughs> See, you kind of gave it away now. Okay. Well, in case uh, for all you NFL fans out there, or college fans, um, Philadelphia Eagles lawn snapper John Dornbus uh, performed magic on America's Got Talent. Yes. Yeah. Card tricks. It was really cool. Yeah, it was really good. He was really good, actually. Yeah. He was really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Even Simon and Simon Cow was a little impressed there. I like seeing him get impressed because it makes me laugh because he's always so like, mm. <laughs> Didn't impress me. Yeah, I know. It's like, I he's so cool. sassy, man. Yeah, I, I, thought that was, I thought that was cool. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of uh, sleight of hand, uh, yeah, card yeah, tricks. Yeah. It was really cool. Uh, you guys have to check it out. Yeah, John Dornboss. Um, he's played in the league for 14 years. Yes. He's been a long since 2013. Yes. It's crazy. I know. It is crazy. Actually, his teammates on the Eagles, Sorry. actually, Zach Ertz tweeted, um, you know, congratulations on him crushing it. Malcolm Jenkins also tweeted about him. So yeah, you know uh, he's from, he performs it with some of his teammates sometimes, and yeah, you know they do those just as impressed as well. So. You know they do those rookie talent shows all the time, like you see yeah. on Hard Knocks. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he did magic on. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, and uh, he also he kind of has like a little side business where he goes to schools, uh, performs tricks, and with motivation speeches. So yeah, during the yeah. off season he's a, yeah during the off season yeah he's a magician comedian exactly. And then uh, when they uh, I think Howie Mandel asked him, "What are you doing here?" Yeah, so, like I uh, recognize your name. Yeah, Howie Mandel uh, Dorham boss, uh, boss said, "Well, the NFL stands for not for long." So I've heard that like that. I yeah, like that so he needs a backup plan. That's a pretty good one. I can really be uh, see him really succeeding in that aspect so yeah so uh it's you got cool, any, right? yeah you got anything else to say about Dorn boss here um just that i i know the guy i know him you know like, him, if you, yeah, yeah. you would have been like name the philadelphia eagles long sniper i probably wouldn't be able to remember, <laughs> remember his name but but you recognize I, I, him, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah i know who he is yeah, yeah. okay okay good long snapper yeah clearly yeah. he's been in the league for 14 years yeah all right so what do we have on the list of things to talk about today jeremiah yeah we got our mvp candidates as well as our comeback picks player of the years. for comeback player of the years, yes. Yeah. And I got five names on each category. I have four for the comeback player, and I have four, 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 four. four, four. I have four for each. Um, question for you. Yes. Just because I, th I totally thought about this while I was watching videos, um, kind of like thinking about who I want to put on my list. Who would you say was the best tight end last season in the, the league? best tight end last in season league. in the yeah. league? Probably Gronk. No, who? My opinion. Who? I mean, I mean that's your opinion. I mean, yeah. like, it's right if you want it to be. I thought Greg Olson was. Greg Olson was really good. I think yes. Matthew, Greg Olson was a monster. He was. Year. He was good. He is a very important part of that offense. I was looking yes. at you know MVP stuff and obviously the reigning MVP being Cam Newton. Um, there was videos and, and it obviously showed Greg Olson. I was like, you know what, Greg Olson, honestly, I think was the best tight end in football last year. Yeah. He was unstoppable, yeah. man. And he, he just like David Johnson we were talking about last last episode, he runs with such power behind him. Yeah, with authority. Yes. He'll he'll run you over. Yeah. Yeah. And then the beard. Don't even get me started on the beard. Now oh. there was a lot of good tight ends last year. Gary Barnage, tight end for Cleveland, he performed really well in the mm -hmm. breakout season. Mm -hmm. Uh, he could have made the breakout list in the past episode as well. I didn't put him it's on true. there. Didn't think about that. I didn't think about it either until now. Way to but, go, man. Yeah, it was really and 
Kobe Fleener going to the Saints. He's up for a potential big year, as like you explained in the last episode. episode. Yeah. yeah, so this is a pretty good year for tight ends. It was. It was. Yeah. Look forward to this upcoming yeah, year. Yeah, I, I am too. So you want to get the good people started in our MVP talk Yes, here? so for those of you who don't know how this works, I'm going to say one. Jeremiah is going to say one. I'm going to say one, so on, so on and so forth. Like I said, I have four. Um, I'm not going to mention Greg Olson in my list. It would be a fun little thing, but tight ends never win the MVP. No, I actually so. didn't think. I actually thought about that on my way over here. Yeah. I was driving. And I was like, you know what? Tight ends don't win this award a lot. It's yeah. literally. It's. Too, I'll, I'll get into it, but the rest of the positions are broken up between quarterback and running back. The rest of the positions are broken up by three total. Yeah, I actually have a couple of defensive players on my list. All right. Well, I have one. So yeah. I'm going to start. I think I kind of know who it is. I mean, yeah. he was up for discussion. A couple exactly. Of years ago. Yeah. So I'm going to start. Yes. With the, I mean, it's hard not to have him in the discussion. Reigning MVP Cam Newton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cam Newton um, obviously he, had a great year last year. He actually didn't make my list. That's fine. Refre- yeah. Refreshing. Yeah. Um, uh, so yes, he had three thousand eight hundred thirty-seven yards, thirty-five touchdowns, ten interceptions. I don't have his rushing numbers on here, but obviously he had a pretty good rushing year. Yes, and uh, so my turn. Yes, it is. Okay, I have Khalil Mack as a dark horse candidate this year. Okay, I mean defensive end and linebacker player. for the Oakland Raiders. He is my dark horse candidate to win this award. Okay. Yes. Next for me, Aaron Rodgers. In the conversation every year, last year, pretty good year. Still three thousand eight hundred twenty-one yards, thirty-one, excuse me, touchdowns and eight interceptions. Aaron Rodgers is always, obviously, always, always, always in the conversation for number one quarterback in the league. Now MVP. Um, I think he's. Uh, I mean, he's going to be up there in, in terms of the conversation. He's a great quarterback. He's got Jordy Nelson back. He's one of his best players. Uh, I think he's going to he's going to he can, he's got a good chance at it. He's actually on my list as well. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll probably discuss him then since he's on my list. You're supposed to tell me before so we can discuss him together. No. Okay. How do we do, do last <laughs> I, episode? I, I, I know, but yeah. Uh, well, I don't know who you have on your, on your list, so we didn't share this before. I know, but yeah. you're supposed to tell me if I say so. We'll say one that's the same as yours. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he's a. He's on my list as well. Okay. And I, ha- I have Le'Veon Bell. Okay, I don't have Le'Veon, but I, okay. I like it. I don't yeah. have him. Okay, it's Le'Veon good. Bell. All right, I okay, like I'll it. I'll discuss it more when she okay. finishes the list. Then I will continue with my Steeler pick then, okay. and Antonio Brown. Okay, yeah, he, he almost made it. Yeah, um, I mean. He almost made it. He's always. Come on. He's always easily can be talked about in this guy. I'll get in his here. numbers in a second. Yeah. Don't even. Oh, just yeah, you don't. wait. Yeah. Darn. His numbers were amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next for you? Uh, J.J. Watt. I have him as well. Okay, I know. Okay. And that's the last on my list. Okay, that's the last on your list. And so I guess I'll go to my last person on my list then. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I already said I already had Aaron Rodgers. Andrew Luck. Okay. I have Andrew Luck on my list. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, okay. all right. So let's go ahead and start with J.J. Watt. You know, talk about J.J. Watt. 76 tackles, 17 and a half sacks. Three, four stumbles. No interceptions this year as no. opposed to he did have one last year. Only one in his career. I mean, he had the one last year. He took it for 80 yards, you know, so <laughs> yeah. pretty good. Uh, pretty good. He did yeah. have – he no, never mind. That was 2014 when he had three tach, uh, catching touchdowns. Yeah. I was going to say last year that was 2014, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, Dom- uh, yeah, obviously Dom- a dominant player. Yeah. Always in the conversation for mm-hmm. MVP. Always in the conversation for defensive MVP. Um, you know, it's it's hard for defensive players to win the MVP. I find uh, because they say that you know most valuable player, and you look at guys like it's it it it's kind of like Ben and I were talking about it yesterday with MVPs in general. Is some people look at it as like a stat thing, and some people look at it like if this person was on the wasn't on the team, what state would this team would be in? You know, so you look at like Rodgers. If Rodgers wasn't on the Packers, how good would they be? Roethlisberger, if he wasn't on the Steelers, how good would they be? Um, Brady, if Brady was gone. How good would the Patriots be? So, which we might just find out if he serves those four games. But little things like that. J.J. Watt, often I feel I feel he doesn't get the notoriety the same way because he is a defensive player. But he's so dominant. So dominant. And uh, I definitely wouldn't be surprised for that. Yeah, like like you said in your uh, What Makes MVP, if J.J. Watt is not on this team, can you imagine how this team would look like on the field, especially in their defense? Because he can literally, he's one of those few players on defense that can take over a game easily. Oh, eat one hundred percent, exactly. So 100%. imagine, imagine if he was on this team, he how would be dominant? Exactly. So how would the Texans, the Texans wouldn't even be relevant? I don't think. Not, not at nowhere as near relevant as they are with yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. of the team. Yeah. Okay, moving on to Antonio Brown. 
Obviously, 136 receptions, sh- just shy of that all-time season record. He's creeping on it every year. Uh, more and more every year. Obviously, 110, 129, 136. And that was, that was missing Ben for, I think, total of seven games. So 136 receptions, 1,834 yards. He averaged 13.5 yards per reception and 10 touchdowns. Uh, obviously, Antonio Brown is the best receiver in the league, in my opinion. He no, plays I agree. Out, I agree. Of his, out, of his, out of his world. Uh, if he has anything like he did last year and then B- Roethlisberger stays healthy all year, I think I think he has a shot at the MVP. Now, the tricky thing is a lot of times receivers that are doing that well, the, the quarterbacks get the notoriety. You know, the, 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 um, notoriety. Notoriety, I guess. They, they get the, you know, the award respect, I guess. So it'll be interesting to see. But, yeah, if he plays anything like he did last year, with a full healthy offense the entire year, I think I think he can get close to breaking 2,000. I think he can break the receiving record uh, in terms of receptions. I, it's just sky's the limit, man. Do you see him breaking the receiving yards record as well? The one that Calvin Johnson said? 2,000 would break it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what I'm saying, yeah. 2,000 oh, okay, yards would yeah. break it. Okay. So, yeah, 100. I mean, 100. With, like, like I said, 1,834 yards, right? In There was games, so last year... He averaged, like I said, 13 and a half yards per reception. He averaged through most of his games, it's like you expected 100 yards. He had 133 yards, 195 yards, 108 yards. Then Ben was hurt. 42, 45, 24. He had 124 for one game against Kansas City, which was the first good game without Ben. Then back down to 47, and then Ben was back. He had 284 yards against the Raiders. 139. The Seahawks, it was a down game, 51, but then he came back 118, 87, 189, 61, 187 again. 119 yards in the, in the playoffs. Like, he clearly produces. So if you can have a, a, a healthy offense the entire year, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, I think he can break the record. It's just, it, the dude's unstoppable. It's insane. So I, will, I, will, I, I, I digress. Yeah, Antonio Brown is the most valuable player that is not a running back or a quarterback in this league. I agree with you there. Yes. On to you. I uh, want to talk about Aaron Rodgers. He was, he was on our list, both of our lists. Mm-hmm. We, we can talk about him. Uh, he's easily a top three quarterback in this league. Yeah, easily. oftentimes the top. Oh, yeah, so. and he's getting, he's getting Jordan Nelson back, which uh, should help him a lot. And A.D. Lacey is in football shape, so he should yeah. help out <laughs> Aaron Rodgers a lot too. And because LAC is also involved in the passing game as well, so mm-hmm. yeah, he's always in the Big discussion. Screen taker. He's always uh, in discussion every year, and I don't think we need to go on any further why he deserves no, it. It's pretty, no, it's, it's pretty, 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 pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. Yes. Okay, moving on to your next one. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell. I can't. I can't even argue with you. No, to me, I think you know. You said Antonio Brown uh, was the most valuable player on that team. I think uh, you can possibly make an. You argument. can make an argument for both. Yeah, for both yeah. that Le'Veon Bell and. And then they can also make an argument with Roethlisberger because you see how that the too, offense yeah. dips without him in it. So exactly, yeah. It's crazy. The three of them. The three of them insane. together is just – the fact that they had these three players on the roster is just – it's unbelievable. Believe me, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yes, I agree with you. I think he's the best dual threat running back in the league. Yes. Healthy. Oh, man. He top, to me, he's a, to me he's, he's a top two, second best running back in the league behind Andrew Peterson. I don't think Andrew okay. Peterson's the best in the league anymore. You don't think so? No, I don't. I still think I think he his has best it. years are behind him. I think he still has. I it. think he's still great. I mean, he's better than me, obviously. I can't, I can't <laughs> pretend like he sucks. Like he's great. Well, he I, really I think honestly, this is probably the year when we're going to find out if he still has it or not. Mm-hmm. And I still think he does. Yeah, I mean, until I, still, I, until I, still I don't really see good. it, until I don't see it from him, I'm still going to put him as the top running back in the league. Fair enough. Yeah, but yeah, uh, going on to a uh, Le'Veon Bell here. Um, he's needed more than ever now. Yes. You know, with uh, Heath Mill retiring. Uh, Martavius uh, Bryant. Martavius. Martavius Bryant suspended. Yeah, so he's Mar- gonna be. Yeah, Martavius Bryant yeah. being. Yeah, it's gonna hurt the offense for sure. Yeah, so I can see him being a MVP this coming year. Okay. Yeah. And hey, you have anybody else on your list? I forget. Is it all of them? Yeah, I got. And, oh, I had Khalil Mack actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Get into that real quick, and then we'll take our first break, and we'll come back with the comeback players. So okay. go ahead and get into Khalil a little bit. Okay, going to Khalil. Like I said, uh, dark horse candidate. Um, I can see him easily getting twenty sacks. This year, he had 15 last year. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. And shoot, he, five he's in on one a, game. If he, he yeah. could have had, he, he, shoot, he could have <laughs> had one more game like the like the Bronco game. He could have had 20. Exactly. So, 
Like, as this dude is unbelievable the way he plays defense. Yeah, uh, it's like we switches. almost don't even need to go into it. Like, like yeah, I know, like, right? You know the monster. You know, you know who he is, and he's mm-hmm. going to be on a team that's I think it's going to make a playoff run this year, division okay. title. So, okay, yeah. And to me, he's the most important player on that defense. Oh, so, by far, he's the best yeah. player on that. He's the best player on that team. Yeah, no, I agree. That's why I said he's the MVP Dark Horse candidate. I like so, it, man. Yeah. I like it. All, All right. right. Well, we're going to take one quick break here, and then we're going to get into the comeback player list. I actually have Andrew Luck, but we don't need to go into that. I'm sorry. Do you want to? Well, I have Andrew Luck on my comeback player list, so we can start with him if you oh, like. Oh, okay. You yeah, can we'll talk go, about... we'll do that. Good okay. segue. Good okay, segue. thank yeah. you. So we'll take yeah. a quick break here at the Golden State Media Concepts football podcast. Don't get anywhere. We'll be back with our comeback player of the year candidate list. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. All right, and we are back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast with our next segment and last segment of the show, Comeback Player of the Year. So uh, as I unfortunately did cut you a little short there, um, Jeremiah, we both have Andrew Luck on our comeback list, and you had him on your MVP list. So let's yes, go I ahead. Do. Let's go ahead. We'll, um, obviously, Luck is one on both of our lists. So yes. I'll start. I'll say my next one I have for uh, Jamal Charles. Yes. Okay. I'm going to shoot over to you. Yes. Uh, Calvin Benjamin. Calvin Benjamin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jordy Nelson. I have him on my list, too. Okay, yes. so go ahead and do your next one. Uh, Terrell Suggs. Okay, and uh, my last one, Tyron Matthew. My last one, Victor Cruz. I thought about Victor Cruz. Yes, Victor Cruz. Okay, so let's start with Andrew Luck. Okay. Um, give me your, your stuff with the, his MVP, you know, uh, and then we'll get into the comeback player. Yeah, he's finally, I think he's finally due for a big year, honestly. Well, I mean, he's had big years. I know, healthy, but I know? think I think it's You mean final, MVP caliber year? MVP caliber. Even though he had 40 touchdowns in 2014, I think he it's his time to finally get that award. Uh, you know, Colts are easily a top five, top ten team with him on that field. Oh, yeah. And you, you can see the drop off this team had when he wasn't on the field last year. Mm-hmm. Which he's, really goes into, con- into consideration how we were talking about valuable yeah, players. Yeah, so he's really valuable to this team. Oh, 100%. Exactly. So, Okay, and then so come back, yeah. come back player. We don't have to go much into it, obviously, with the same sense. You know, he's so valuable to that team. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league when he's healthy. So I think he's going to have a good year. Oh, and, yeah. And up, up for the ability of being comeback player of the year. Yeah. All right. So moving on to Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles obviously uh, tore his ACL again last year, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, Jamal Charles, I mean, it's weird. He gets hurt. Like, he's done it before. And he comes back, and he played really well the next year. I don't think he got hurt. And so um, I'm looking from him. You know, he's also one of the best dual threat running backs into the game. Um, uh, he's he's lightning quick. Uh, he's he's just an insane running back. You know, when he's healthy, he's really fun to watch. So uh, my hope is he comes back and stays healthy. And I think the Chiefs are going to have a nice year this year again. Uh, that defense, great secondary, underrated offense for the most part because of the not the huge names. But Travis Kelsey, we were talking about great tight ends, had a great year last year. Uh, Alex Smith is just playing lights out as the quarterback for that offense. You know, even Chris Conley was a guy that that I considered for the breakout star um, from last show. So receiver there. Uh, and then obviously Jeremy, Jeremy, Mac, I'm sorry, Jeremy Macklin. I said Jacqueline. I was like mixing his names. Jeremy Macklin. <laughs> he put them together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, I think he can have a good year. On to you. Yeah, I had Calvin Benjamin on this list. Uh, yeah, Calvin Benjamin. I almost put on mine also. Yeah, but yeah. I opted for I, Nelson I think instead. he's up for a big year. I think year. so too. Yeah. I opted for Nelson instead. But so tell me why uh, why he's a, a candidate for you. Because, you know, before he got hurt last season, he was up for a bigger role. Yeah, lights out. Yeah, bigger role than he was in his rookie year. You know what I like about him a lot? Yeah. Is he's such a big guy. 
he's one of the few guys that goes across the middle, and I would be like afraid to hit yeah. him. <laughs> he went up like four times across yeah, the middle, he's, he's, and he's so big. He's just as tall as Cam. He's six five. Yeah, so he's gigantic. Pounds. Yes. So uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah, and I think because uh, he eclipsed a thousand yards uh, his rookie year. What did he award. finish with? One thousand and eight. Honestly, I would. Yeah, see, okay, that's because yeah, it was close. I, I was think, say I, I wouldn't he have guessed so, he got a thousand. Yeah, but yeah, he's he's gonna. I think he's gonna get more than that. Yeah, I was really bummed when he got hurt because yeah. he's fun to watch. Yeah, and he then, really uh, is. Yeah, and then uh, not only that, um, Cam Newton's kind of like he's also going to be an MVP candidate, even though he didn't make mm-hmm. my list. Yeah, the offense is so improved from. From a uh, previous year when mm-hmm. Calvin Benjamin was a rookie, yeah, yeah. obviously and you see it exactly, as a yeah. Super Bowl run, and it's but just yeah. so, there's so much to defend, and everybody thought it was who's he gonna throw to, you know, yeah. with Kelvin out, now Kelvin coming back in, like it's just gonna be I, that offense even is gonna more be really dangerous. It's like yes. it's like the Packers or the Steelers, you know, you're like okay, you it was it was like when the Steelers were completely healthy, you had you had Ben, you had Le'Veon, but you also had um, Antonio Brown. And then you had Marcus Wheaton, who wasn't bad out of the slot, and then you had a really good game against Seahawks. But then, then you're like, God. And then there's Martavis Bryant we have to cover. And imagine if you had that entire offense. And then, oh, now there's Ladarius Green. You know, the same thing with the, with the Packers. Okay, Le'Veon, I'm sorry, um, Jacoby, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Lacey out of the backfield. And then you have Rodgers, obviously, who you always have to keep an eye on. And then you have Randall Cobb. But now Nelson's back. And you had James Jones last year who had a great showing. And you have Devontae Adams. And you have Devontae too. Adams, who's a young yeah. player coming. So it's, it's these offenses that do this. It's, it's like the Jaguars, you know. You, just had to worry, you only had to worry about one guy. You only had to worry about Allen Robinson. Now you have to worry about Allen Hearns. And now you have to worry about is Julius um, Thomas going to be as much of a factor coming in. And is Yelding going to have a good year? Is is Chris Ivory going to have a good year? It's, it's these offenses just like you're saying with – the Panthers um, and and Kelvin's just gonna just even more escalate that. It's gonna be great to watch. Yeah, and then next on my list, I had Terrell Suggs. This okay. is a guy that's been out of football since 2014 when he got tore his ACL, I believe. Um, ACL. Leading into last year's season. Yeah. No, he tore yeah, it he, last year. Yeah, he, yeah, but there's a uh, he. I think it, uh, he hurt. I think, I think he got uh, hurt. Season. I think he got hurt the end of the 2015 season. Yeah. Or the 14 season, and coming in, he got hurt. Yeah, the first game of the year last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's had in, he didn't play last year, you know. At all, no. He at got all, hurt the very all. first game. Exactly, I think yeah. the first series of the first yeah, game. Yeah, and then, uh, so yeah, that's why I think he's up for even, even though in the last show we talked about him and Elvin Stewart playing in a limited role, you know, with the rotation of young players that they have. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to make a, a big impact in a limited role because, you know, they, yeah, they're gonna start working. They're gonna start working on working these. In and yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I see. Uh, I think he's gonna have a really uh, good year, bounce back year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if he can eclipse uh, ten sacks or not, but he's still a valuable player to this. Yeah, he's still a, a disruptor. Yeah, he's still a valuable player to this team. So remember, in his last full season, he had 12 sacks in 2014. That's very true. So yeah. Um, real quick, I'm gonna break. I'm gonna take a quick break because I don't want to take our last break too late. So we take one real quick, and then we'll finish. Okay. I have two more players on my comeback list, and I forget to give three more on yours. Yep. So take one last quick break. Sorry, guys. we got to do it to you. Uh, at the Golden State Media Concepts. <laughs> Why are you Ryan Seacresting the people? i got to do it. Uh, at, the, at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports <laughs> Podcast. We'll be right back, okay? Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. All right, and we're back here at the Golden State Media Concepts football podcast. And our last rest of our comeback player list, we're going to have Jordy Nelson, who we both have on our list. Obvious candidate here, Jordy Nelson with the Packers. Great, great, great player. Uh, what what about him make uh, kind of shows you like you know he's somebody that you personally think could be a good comeback star? First of all, he has Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback, and you know these two players have chemistry. You know since 
Jordy Nelson became a significant part of this offense. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, yeah, and then after he tore his ACL last year, uh, I think will he training camp preseason. I forget when he did it. But yeah, dude, um, he. He's going back to full strength now. Uh, he should be at full strength at the start of the season. I think yes. he's even going to have a bigger year than he did in 2014 when he had 1,500. Yeah. More than 1,500 yards. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he – I think it was his Achilles or his ACL. It was, it was, it was an injury that kept him out Yeah, it was a, a, a preseason yeah. game week mm-hmm. two or three against the Steelers. Uh, non-contact, which are always the worst. So, unfortunately, he did get hurt there. But – yeah, I think um, yeah, Norton Nelson when he's healthy, he's one of the best quarterbacks. You and I have talked. I'm sorry, receivers that you and I have talked about on, on episodes before. The quarterbacks can just trust and throw the ball and know he like he like they like the back shoulder thing. That's just insane to me. Like they just throw it and they know where it's going to be. It's it's great to watch. They're fun to watch. So yeah, I mean, to me, he's a top five receiver in this game. So okay, yeah. well, going from one receiver to the next, you're yeah. with your last player, Victor. Yeah, Cruz. Victor Cruz. I think the. Salsa King is back this year. Okay. Full strength. I would yeah. love to see him in full strength. I think I would too, especially with you know him playing side by side by Odell Beckham Jr. Well, I wouldn't say side by side. I think they're opposite sides, well, but you I know, know what you mean. You know, I would love to see that offense yeah, with him healthy exactly. also. Mm-hmm. It'd be great to see. Yeah, and his last year in uh, – because he didn't play last year, obviously, no. due to injuries. And 2014, he only played six games. And before that, he was, he was doing pretty well in, in those six games. 337 yards. And a touchdown, and those for the limited time that he played. Mm-hmm. And remember, this guy has been—he was regarded as one of the best receivers when he was when he broke out. So I'm looking forward to a big bounce back year from Victor Cruz. And if he can stay healthy and play really well, I think this offense can be among the elite in the okay. league. So okay. yeah. Uh, so moving from the offensive side of the ball to the defensive side of the ball, and my last player would be another NFC team uh, in the Cardinals in Tyron Matthew. So Tyron Matthew obviously got hurt again this year, unfortunately. Uh, but I know I don't have to get into the kind of player he is for the tr- Cardinals. We've talked about it in other episodes. He's just so valuable to them <clears throat> as a as a hybrid, you know, corner, uh, you know, hybrid nickel guy, safety, come down and play some of that. Famous, uh, you know, safety linebacker that Troy Polamalu made so well known, Ed Reed. Um, he's he's really one of the best safeties in the league, and I think that when he's healthy, he plays like it. And um, I think that you know the Cardinals' defense is so good that I, that him coming back is just going to make him better. Uh, and he's a player I like to watch too. So hopefully yeah. he can get he can get healthy and he can and, and and play again like he did the start of this past year because it was great to watch. Yeah, and I have a uh, honorable mention on my list. Of course, you do. <laughs> Uh, I have a uh, Des Bryant honorable mention. I know. thought about putting him on mine. Yeah, I was between uh, him and Levy on the add. Yeah, to mine. yeah. And then uh, I also have Jamal Charles as well. Okay, so, so I'll make August since the honorable mentions a thing. <laughs> I will. I'll do Levy on. So. Okay. <laughs> I like the way you did like, since it's such a since, thing. Yeah, since yeah, it's apparently uh, no one told me. <laughs> I thought, okay, whatever. But yeah, uh, that we're, concludes our show. Yeah, guys. we're all done. Yeah. That was very good. I really like this. We should do these. We should do uh, discussions more often. We should do these. You know what? How about next episode? We'll see. Maybe we'll do this for college. Yes, we'll do this. Yeah, <laughs> some Heisman maybe. candidates, some 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 teams that might step into the playoff conversation yes, this year. Yes, we should do. And not only that, we might have to do some conference previews coming up soon. Exactly. Yeah. So all yeah. you college fans, look for it. It's gonna be great. Yeah, exactly. Sorry that it was so much NFL today, guys. But yeah, there's less, you know college is slow before training camp yeah. gets going. Yeah. Okay. So. You want to bring the good people out, or yeah, you want so to talk about what we're going to do in this weekend? So, what do you want to do? I don't know. I'm going to work. So yeah, me, me too. I don't have much going on. Yeah, I, me neither. But unfortunately, yeah, this is our last show of the week until Monday. Yes. So, guys, uh, listen to us. Listen to us a lot. Yes. And um, where can they find us? Where th- can they find us? Yeah, they not not in us? person. I mean, oh, <laughs> they can, I was about to say they can find us in Sacramento. Okay, no, they can find us on Facebook at the Golden State Media Conference Football Podcast. As well as on Twitter and Instagram at GSMC underscore football. And you can also check out this show and all our other shows at GSMC Podcast Network.com. I think that's the GSMC Podcast.com. GSM Podcast.com. So, yeah. yeah. GSMC Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the website wrong. Sorry. It's but okay. Yeah, that's okay. But yeah, man, uh, you can check out uh, my baseball show uh, tomorrow and Friday. We got two episodes for you guys, for all you MLB fans out there. As well as Alex does the soccer show. 
I have sports tomorrow. And sports. Yeah, soccer's yeah. on Tuesdays. Yeah. Sports. Well, I'm telling you, I'm Tuesday, letting you know what's, what kind of Thank you so you much. Yeah, yeah, you know. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, don't forget to use hashtag GSMC Podcast yes, Network yes, on don't Twitter. That. And hey, you guys, you have you have a great weekend. Yeah, none of that. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud, Google Play, all the good stuff. Yeah, so there's no excuse that you guys can't listen to us. Exactly. And catch you guys on the flippity flip. Catch you guys on the flippity flip. <laughs>